Welcome to One Mind Zen. Today's talk is given by Unsan Chita. Greetings, great bodhisattvas. Hope everyone is well. This mid-August, not excruciatingly hot day, at least on the east coast of the U.S. <clears throat> Part of the teachings of Buddhism in general is of the uh, six realms of rebirth. And every now and then they're mentioned in Zen uh, you certainly hear the word rebirth often enough, but it's a relatively traditional sort of teaching. And um, if you think this is going to turn into some sort of lecture about Buddhist history or liturgical history or dogma, uh, don't worry, it won't. According to the Vayan Sutra, evil deeds cause rebirth in one of the six realms, right? Whether you buy into Dharma and you buy into Karma and what you buy into rebirth or not is pretty much a moot point for the purposes of this talk. So the six realms you might be reborn into are devas, asuras, humans, animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. All of those are impermanent states, as the word rebirth would sort of imply that it's, you know, not one and done. Um, and they each have their own interesting little quirks about them, let's say. Um, devas are heavenly beings, they're somewhat godlike, uh, they have great power, they can fly, they live in splendor, uh, they can do things that us in the human realm, or we in the human realm, to be more grammatical about it, can't do don't do. Their lives are easy. They can put their feet up and relax because it's all good coming in, rolling in, you might say. But in their lack of problems, having it so easy. They sort of forget maybe where they come from, but they sort of forget what the rest of the other five realms have to deal with. They're sort of aloof. They're removed from the day-to-day -day mundane life that we, in the human realm at least, um, have to deal with. At any point in this talk, you can think, hmm, do I know someone who qualifies for that? Not to give away where I'm headed or anything. So, Asuras are the next realm of rebirth, and uh, sometimes they're referred to as titans, sometimes demons, sometimes the enemies of the devas. And one of their traits is that they're very envious. Um, seems to me that they would be the kind of being who would have no problem putting someone else down to puff themselves up to appear better than. And indeed, they really think they are better than. Uh, 
they just go about uh, showing their exalted status by nastiness. They're unpleasant to be around. They would just as soon stab you in the back as they would give you a backhanded compliment, let's say. Whatever it is to prove that basically they're the smartest beings in the room. And again, you might know some people who would qualify for that. Uh, my favorite, for whatever reason, if I'm allowed to have a favorite about this, uh, the hungry ghost, the preta. They're typified by having immense stomachs and either a mouth the size of a pinhole or a throat the size of a pencil. They can never get enough. It's a constant state of, of hunger, of longing, of I want more, I want any, I want something. And they're associated with things like addiction and compulsion and might be involved in some theft sexual misconduct, um, desire, greed, ignorance, they're all part of this whole preta, hungry ghost um, trait. Um, then you've got the hell realm and there's a, uh, a Korean sage from many, 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 many years ago uh, named Wan Yo. And he was a scholar and he was uh, certainly well versed in the Dharma. You can say that without any, any question. And at one point or another, he decided that he would um, disrobe and in his case he meant that in more ways than one and somebody took him up on his uh less than precepts of observing behavior about you know drinking and going to brothels and who knows what else but his response to them was you can't save hell beings if you're not in hell. And that's one of my favorite uh, quotes of all time. Putting it all down, you know, just doing what's required to save all beings, even if it means breaking the pre uh, precepts, whatever is appropriate at that given moment. Um, It's said that that's like the worst realm to be uh, reborn into, the hell realm. Um, they're in, in a constant state of anger. They're on attack all the time. They drive away anyone who shows them love and kindness. They seek out the other hell beings that they can find. Um, Karmically speaking, you could say that anger and aggression are two of the things that will um, constitute being reborn uh, in the hell realm. Animals, and I'm sorry about this, Zhang Zhang, but animals are marked by stupidity, prejudice, complacency, kind of... You know, if you own a cat, for example, you know that it's, I'm going to sleep until I find out that I'm supposed to be in the other room, or I'm hungry and I will stick my paw in your eye, 
because I'm hungry and you need to do something about it. Um, they don't really volunteer for anything uncomfortable. They don't um, deal with anything other than a pure, I want it now, uh, including sleep, including eat, including I want to go outside. They're not, let's say, well-versed uh, in the Dharma and uh, quite often uh, don't have the capacity to uh, save all beings, I suppose, Lassie or Rin Tin Tin notwithstanding, if that reference means anything to anybody anymore. Um, the human realm is the only realm that it said you can escape samsara, that you can not go through any further rebirths. You can awaken in the human realm. While in the human realm, you may be subject to, you know, passion, desire, uh, other things that are, let's say, less than enlightened behavior, but the human realm is the one that also is typified by Buddha nature. So we all have this innate capacity for no more rebirth. Um, so now that I've gone through all that, um, what does that mean to us as Zen practitioners? One would think that from all of those descriptions that rebirth is a bad thing and we want to avoid it. We want to become full-fledged Buddhas, enter Nirvana, and no more rebirth, no more better luck next time, kid. The Bodhisattva, however, chooses rebirth countless times. The Bodhisattva will be reborn to infinity if required, so that other beings can become awakened. For Zen practice, we're much more concerned with the here and now, the But we also have to realize that in this here and now, there are those of us, and sometimes we ourselves, who are in one of those six realms. I'm sure we can all think of some people who would qualify for the deva, who's not quite able to relate to the normal run-of-the-mill human. They're just incapable of being concerned. I'm sure we can all think of people that would qualify in the Asura realm because they're just plain nasty and they want to tear everyone down and show how much, uh, how superior they are. Um, hungry ghosts, um, all you have to do is take a walk down Skid Row and you will see uh, line after line of preta. Animals, obviously, very easy to pick up. They're animals. And as I said, you can pretty much recognize them by sort of laziness and then followed by intense desire. Hell beings, 
we all, I think, can think of some people who are in that level of suffering that would qualify as a hell being. And humans, well, hopefully we all realize that we have Buddha nature and although we may not be exhibiting Buddha-like behavior right now, we can. My old saying is if you want to be a Buddha, do Buddha stuff. But attaching to concepts like the six realms can be a hindrance or as part of our practice of observing ourselves, looking deeply into ourselves, checking to see where we are in as objective a manner as possible, we can see which realm we fall into. Am I just totally incapable of understanding, you know, the problem someone else might have? Uh, am I nasty and I'm trying to feel superior to someone, be the smartest guy in the room? Um, am I addicted to something? Am I in constant turmoil, angry, aggressive, greedy? Am I just sort of lazy or am I exhibiting the capacities shown in the human realm to act as a bodhisattva, to be reborn as many times as it takes to help liberate all beings and see that they're not reborn. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to save them all. Thank you.